Hi, I'm Macy Kessler with Pulte Group's Corporate Communications Team, and I'm here today with Pulte Group Board of Directors member, Lila Snyder. Thanks for being here, Lila. Thanks for having me. So to start us off, can you take us through a brief walkthrough of your career? Sure, it's a little bit of a random walk, actually. Uh, I started my career as an engineer, so I went to school for a very long time to be a mechanical engineer, which I thought was going to be uh, my career. I thought that's what I wanted to do. And when I finished, I found my way to McKinsey & Company. So I got a PhD in mechanical engineering and realized I didn't like those jobs very much, uh, which was kind of a dumb time to realize that, but that's the way it happened. And I found my way to McKinsey. At the time, McKinsey was hiring PhDs. They were looking for a broader pool of applicants, and I thought, what a great way to learn something Thing about business without continuing to go to school. So uh, I joined McKinsey, I spent about 15 years there um, and I loved it. I did work across strategy and marketing and sales and operations uh, for a wide range of companies. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and after about 15 years at McKinsey, I ended up taking a job at Pitney Bowes. Uh, it was an opportunity for me to lead a business and own a P&L and operate something. And I felt like I was ready to take all of that advice I'd been um, uh, thinking about for years and put it into action in my own business. So, and then I've been at Pitney Bowes now almost six years. Wow. So are there any specific keys to your success that you can highlight? The one thing that I always go back to is risk taking. If I look at the career trajectory and the moments where I felt like I really advanced, it all comes back to taking a risk that at the time felt really, really uncomfortable. And it was usually a mentor or a sponsor or someone in my environment that said, you should try this. You would be good at this. And I was crazy enough to trust them and probably did things that at the time I wasn't prepared for or I wasn't fully qualified for, but I had enough trust in the people who were suggesting it that I took those risks. And that ultimately, if I look at where I am today, without those risks, I wouldn't be here. And in your current role now at Pitney Bowes, you are leading global e-commerce and pre-sort services. Yeah. So what are some strategies that you've learned to help other women achieve more prominent roles in their organizations? I'll go back. I'm a broken record on the risk taking. It's just, I believe it's so important. And so I try really hard to stretch all of the folks that work for me, but especially the women into things that they might not think they're ready for. And women in particular tend, I don't like to generalize, but, but tend to want to feel like they have all of the skills to do something before they try it. And, and men tend to take a different approach. And so really stretching the women in my team to say, you, you've got this, you can do this, right? The, the point of doing the assignment is to build the skills, not to do the assignment once you're fully ready, right? That's part of the growth and the professional development that you get through a new opportunity. So it, it's mostly just trying to find those stretch opportunities and making sure that I'm putting women appropriately into them wherever I can. So for you personally, what's the best career advice that you've ever received? There's probably two. Um, one is get a sponsor. So you hear people talk about mentors. I, I've always believed that sponsors are more important, and that's because early in my career I had someone who told me the difference. And a, a mentor is someone who uh, gives you great advice and is a little bit like a parent. You know, they feel more like a, a an, an older, wiser version of yourself, and they tell you experiences that they had, and you learn from that, which is great. Uh, but a sponsor is different. A sponsor actually takes risks to help you progress and creates opportunities for you. And so early on, I got this advice, which is mentors are great, but sponsors are key. Find a sponsor. Find someone who believes in you, sees something in you, and is willing to take a risk on you because ultimately when you are a more senior person in an organization and you suggest someone for a project or you put someone in a role you're putting your own credibility at risk as well right and so it, it takes a lot more courage to be a sponsor than a mentor so that's one find a sponsor find someone who uh, believes in you and who you can ask for opportunities who will create opportunities for you that's one and the second is take those risks really trust if someone has singled you out for an assignment or a special project or a promotion, um, trust that they know you can do it, right? And, and take the risk. Don't second guess. So what are some of the qualities if you were to sponsor someone that you look for in you know, a mentee or whoever that you're going to really put that faith in? I, I look for a couple things pretty consistently, and um, one is passion. So I would much rather sponsor someone who is enthusiastic and passionate and excited about what we're doing. So that's one. Um, 
And the, the second is the, um, the willingness to learn and the excitement about learning, right? So I, I observe this all the time. A lot of managers will say, I want someone who has ticked these 43 boxes to put them in the role. So they have all the expertise and all the deep knowledge and they know exactly what they're doing on day one. But the reality is often someone with more raw talent who's eager and has passion, um, the ability to learn, someone who can uh, can grasp a new challenge and adapt to it, that's kind of the second thing I look for, right? I don't look as much for, you know, has that person done this three times before? I look more for passion and the ability to adapt and learn uh, because if they can do that, they'll figure it out. So for your career, how important have sponsors or mentors been? So important, sponsors, both sponsors and mentors. Mentors make me feel better, right? <laughs> I think they make us all feel better, right? They're the people you go to when um, you've had a bad day or a bad week or a bad month, uh, and they help you feel better that you will come out of it on the other side. Um, sponsors have been critical though. So sponsors make me feel worse often. Um, they, <laughs> uh, they, they have often been very frank with me about what I was missing right? Um, they they uh, were clear about what I needed to get better at, but they were also creating opportunities for me. And so sponsors have been really important at, at each kind of leg of the journey. So, I mean, just by way of example, right? I was a, a career consultant. I'd been a consultant for 15 years. And uh, my current boss, our CEO at Pitney Bowes, offered me a job to run a $500 million business. I'd never owned a P&L. I've ne I'd never sold anything. I'd never had more than four people reporting to me at any one time, right? I ran small teams of four or five consultants. And it was, you know, a pretty large organization with a, in a public company. And he said, you can do this. And at the time I thought, he's crazy. And I said, I, doesn't this make you really nervous? And he said, no, I think you're gonna be great at it and I'm gonna help you. And that, that kind of taking a chance on someone, it propels you from, you know, a trajectory that you're on into a different stratosphere. That's fantastic. So I want to turn back to diversity and talk more about that at an organizational level. So is diversity something that is, you know, talked about at the board level? Absolutely. It's actually the reason I'm here, you know, one of the reasons I'm here, right? Uh, as Pulte looked to bring on another board member, they wanted to make sure they were increasing the diversity on the board. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, it's been awesome to be part of the team. Uh, it's something we talk about a lot, both on the board, uh, the leadership level, and throughout the organization. And you're Pulte Group's newest board member. That's right. What's your sense of the company's culture? It's a great culture. It's funny, um, when, I, when I first started to meet Ryan and the rest of the board and the team, you, you can tell uh, the company has a soul to it. There, there's a purpose behind uh, what you all are building uh, that draws everyone together, which is great. Um, I love the focus on employees and engagement, and I think that that breeds a, a culture where employees feel empowered and great about the work they're doing always leads to a great culture and typically leads to business success, and we're seeing that certainly happen here. Well, it is a great place to work, now certified. It is. <laughs> and so I wanted to get your reaction about this and just read a statement to you and get your take on it. Okay. So back in 2001, only 1% 1 of Fortune 500 CEOs were women. Mm -hmm. Now 2019, that's risen to 7%. What's your take on that and how that rate might grow in the future? I hate that stat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we all probably feel that way. Um, look, I, I think there's two ways to look at it. It's getting better, right? And I, I think at, uh, at all levels, the conversation about diversity is much more honest and open today than it's ever been, at least in my experience and in, in, in the places that I'm uh, either on the board or part of the leadership team or just uh, more broadly out in the industry. So the fact that we're talking about it so much, by definition, will make this better. Um, I, I think it will continue to get better, right? I don't expect it to get better overnight. So more broadly speaking, what do you think is the greatest barrier to women leading companies and serving on boards? I don't like to talk about barriers. I really don't. I think we live in a world now where opportunities are available for us uh, if we're ready to seize them. So I don't like to think about barriers. Uh, but I do think that as leaders and as individuals, we have to get ourselves ready to be CEOs. And I think one of the uh, obstacles today is just um, we need more women who have the right set of experiences that qualify them to be a CEO, right? Or to be on a board. And so, you know, what I tend to see is um, women who uh, 
um, are taking on assignments but that aren't taking on the kinds of assignments that would lead you down a path. So we need more women to want to be in finance roles and in P&L ownership roles and sales leadership roles because if you look at CEOs, they tend to come through that part of the organization at some point in their career. That ownership of a number that you have to hit and deliver is a really important part of being a CEO. And so what I would say is I would encourage more women to seek those kinds of opportunities out. I think many organizations are dying to find women who want to do those roles. So the opportunities I believe are there. And the more we can create uh, those opportunities for women and get women excited about them, they'll have the right qualifications to be CEOs and boards will be thrilled to put them in that role when they're ready. So that to me would be the thing I would point to is, is just more, um, more focus on the types of roles we're putting women in in our organizations to get them ready to be CEOs. So to follow that and really to end on this note, what advice do you have for aspiring leaders? I will go back to risk taking. I, take risks, believe in yourself, or find somebody who believes in you. If you can't find the confidence inside, find somebody, a sponsor, a mentor, uh, your manager who, who sees that spark and trust them and take the risks when they're given to you. And raise your hand for risks, a ask for them. Um, it will move your career along so much faster because you'll just accelerate that development. I, I tell everyone, if you don't feel, I got this advice early on, every single day, you should feel a little bit uncomfortable. Like I'm doing something that I don't totally feel like I've done before or that I have uh, in my back pocket. And I think too often we follow this trajectory in our careers where we're stretched and then we settle in. And we say, okay, I'm comfortable now. I, I'm, I'm having a good lifestyle. I feel really confident. I like my manager. And you wake up and three years later, you haven't really learned anything new. And so this idea of putting yourself out and continuing to push yourself just past the edge of your comfort zone. And I try to think about that every day. Am I doing something today that feels just a little bit uncomfortable? The answer for me is usually yes. Uh, but I would encourage you to think about as younger leaders, that I think is an important thing uh, that keeps your career moving at a faster pace uh, than maybe it would otherwise. But taking risks, that's the key. Take risks, don't be afraid. Fantastic, well thank you so much, Lila. I really appreciate it. Thank you.